Hi there. I see that you are a newcomer to structural integration. Is that correct? Wonderful. Okay. So what made you seek out structural integration? Or, as some better know it, rolfing? Okay. Just kind of seemed like an interesting experience. That's just fine. Would you mind if I tell you a little bit about its history and background? Okay. Wonderful. You get cozy, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. So structural integration, or Rolfing, was founded in the 1940s by Dr. Ida Rolf. And by the 1960s, she was teaching her Rolfing method of structural integration at the Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California. This is the same place where people like Traeger or Feldenkrais had also taught, was this big hub of different alternative medicine varieties. So that's a little fun fact. It's funny to see how a lot of these different modalities have overlapped over the years. So the basic idea with structural integration is how can we help the body so that it is at its most efficient, its most economical against the pull of gravity? So if you think about it, gravity is always tethering us to the earth, right? And it's quite a substantial force. And if you've ever noticed, if you have your head straight, it's not very hard for the weight to be supported. But the more that you pull your head forward, it starts to get a little harder. And it's harder on your neck. It's harder on your body to keep you supported as gravity is pulling you down much more. So Ida Rolf looked at these factors on the body, how gravity affects the body, and saw that often we adapt, the body adapts in spectacular fashions. However, that also means that sometimes it adapts in ways that are maladaptive. And maybe if we have an injury on one side, the other side might compensate for it. And then long after that injury is gone, we're still stuck in those patterns. So your body normalizes these odd ways of compensation that don't serve you anymore and actually can work against you. But your brain has normalized it so that you don't even notice it until you find yourself in pain. And we really do want to get to the point where we're not changing it because of pain. We're changing it before it gets that far. So Ida Rolf designed a 10-step series of sessions. This is often called the recipe. And each session is focused on, on a certain goal. So for example, our first session mostly focuses on breathing and how we can make breathing so much easier for you. How can we make it so the breath is as effortless as possible? We do this by working on the chest. We do it by working on, of course, the abdomen. The diaphragm is a big, big part of that. We'll work on the back. We'll do a little bit with your arms. We'll just see how it goes, okay? But we want to focus on the breath first and foremost. We want to instill a sense of awareness. We are trying to retrain your body so that it realizes that these maladaptive practices that it's been doing, that it doesn't go back to that. So a bit of a muscle memory thing. We want to retrain your body so that it doesn't go back to those different practices that were actually harming you in the long run. Okay? So first we're going to start by doing a little bit of a walking assessment, okay? I'm going to have you get up for a moment, and I'm going to have you walk to the edge of the room for me, okay? Alright, I'm just going to be looking at how your body arranges itself as you move. 
a lot of structural integration is looking at the fascia, the muscle groups, how does everything work together in different forms and different positions, okay? Walking is a big part of that. So if you could just walk to the end of the room for me. Okay. And if you could come back for me. And what do you notice about your body as you're walking? Is there any sort of places where it's tense or if there's any pain at all? Okay, why don't you take another lap back and forth and really focus on how your body feels as you walk. Okay, do a little body scan. Everything from how does it feel as I'm breathing? How do my arms feel as they're swinging? How do my legs feel? How does my spine feel? Things like that. Okay, go ahead and take another lap for me, right? Okay, and come back. All right, so what did you notice there? It's fine if you don't notice much. We're going to try to get you in the habit of thinking about how your body's arranged and how we can arrange it better, okay? All right, so now I'm going to have you lie down for me and we are going to look a bit on the breath. So as I was talking with you here, I was noticing a little bit about how you're breathing and I'm gonna have you lie down so I can look at it lying down as well and we'll talk a little bit about the breath, how it feels, what its differences are, standing up, lying down, that sort of thing, okay? So let's go ahead and get you arranged. And how is this position? Okay, that's just fine. And how is the table? Is that comfortable? Do you need any supports at all? Okay, wonderful. So I'm just going to have you breathe normally. And I know that's a little difficult when I've just brought that to your attention, but do your best to breathe just as you believe you normally would. And now that I have my glasses, I can see this much better. Good. And how does this feel compared to how you were when you were standing? How does the breath feel different? Mm hmm Okay. As we are going forth, I want you to really think about how your body moves, what all is used in that, what all expands or contracts or stretches or moves. I want you to think about these different things here. And would you mind just trying to take the deepest breath that you can? Okay, and let it go. And where do you feel that? Is it more in your chest? Is it more in your stomach? Do you feel it in your back? Okay, all right, so keep an eye or keep a uh, mental pin, I suppose, on how you breathe. Now I'm going to start here by working the upper chest and I want you to tell me if this is painful. It will likely be pretty intense, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable and shouldn't be painful, okay? We are definitely going to be doing a lot of work here and you will certainly feel that, but we don't want it to be too much where you don't want to do this again, okay? All right, so I am just going to be doing these, these almost, it feels static, but I am doing a lot more than you think. 
and I might change just a little bit, might reposition, and I'm definitely going to have you do a little bit of movement too. I'm going to use your body to help fix things a bit. So a lot of what we work on with rolfing is fascia. Now, I feel that the education about our anatomy tends to be a little lackluster. I do not recall in my time in biology or even advanced biology touching on fascia at all, really. And fascia is incredibly important in our bodies. It is this sheet of tissue that covers everything. It holds our muscles, our blood vessels, our bones into place, all these different little structures that we don't even really think about. It's the sheet that wraps around everything, and fluid runs through it as well. It's, it's a fluid thing. And what the fascia is supposed to do is it is supposed to stretch and move with you, of course, while keeping everything held together. And the fascia should be pretty mobile. But unfortunately, with a lot of activities, or even without activity, we may see that the fascia starts to thicken, or it gets stuck, or it dries up a bit. And that's where we get a lot of pain. Fascia does have a lot of nerves, and it can be pretty sensitive. So when we talk about having a knot in our muscles, more than likely we're actually having problems with our fascia, and we don't even know it. So while I'm pressing here, I want you to take this arm right here, and I want you to move it very slowly out so that we're going to be making a T, okay? I'm going to use your body a little bit to help stretch this out. Okay, and is this painful for you? Is it too uncomfortable? Okay, you can definitely feel a stretch, that's good. Okay, let's hold this for just a second. And then if you could just spread your fingers for me, okay? Spread the fingers. Okay, and if you could turn your hand, so you're going to cock it all the way up, so your fingers are pointing towards your head, your palm is parallel to the wall. Okay, yep, just bring that up, and that's a pretty big stretch, huh? Yes. Do you notice any twinging or tingling or anything? Yeah. Okay. So that would be because the nerves can get a little pinched here. It's not going to cause any permanent... well, it's not even damaging, really. It's just that we are pressing on them just right. <laughs> so that'll go away when I have you lower your, your arm back down, and I'm actually going to have you do that now. If you could just bring your arm back. Good. And just let that relax here. Good. So a lot of what we're doing is I'm looking at the fascia and how it's behaving and we're also giving it a good stretch. We don't want any places where this is stuck. Okay, and now I'm going to have you roll your arm outwards. So your palm and the whole arm turns out, so your palm will be to the ceiling. Okay, feel a good stretch there? Good, good. All right, I'll have you relax this arm while it's still, while it's still rolled outwards. Good. All right, 
right and you can put that back and we're gonna start working towards the rib cage and the abdomen here so there's gonna be a lot of pressing in and I'm doing like this little bit of of traction here we're gonna be stretching this out a bit but just very minutely we're not going to be stretching the entire thing just little sections at a time and down here is where we get into the diaphragm the diaphragm is also something we don't focus on a lot but it is incredibly important so your diaphragm it looks a little bit like a jellyfish you have two domes so actually we could think of it looking like two jellyfish we have two domes and then we have some dangly bits and each dome has some dangly bits we have a left and a right and your diaphragm is the muscle most responsible for breathing actually I'm going to take my hands off for a moment and I'm gonna watch you breathe so as I said before we're talking a little bit about mind training and retraining the body so I'm giving your body some information and it takes a little bit for it to be digested so I'm giving it a moment to understand what we're doing and the result that we want okay and waiting for a change so diaphragm responsible for breathing big big part of it we think really the lungs are just the main part that's not true I want you to think about it as you breathe what all happens when you breathe What all do you notice? What what moves? What happens when you breathe? What you probably will notice is that ideally your chest moves and your abdomen moves, right? As you inhale, you're pulling in a breath. That diaphragm pulls downward and it's literally sucking the breath, the air, into your body like a vacuum. And your abdomen compensates for it, it moves, it adjusts the pressure. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll also notice that you are back is pretty involved in it too so your back also expands and if we move up obviously our chest should rise but also your shoulder blades pull apart a little bit too they move as well your entire torso is involved in breathing oftentimes we only think it's just the chest and if we're doing meditation or listening to ASMR videos, we might notice that we breathe into our diaphragm. That's our deep breath. That doesn't feel like what we usually do. Good, good. I'm gonna watch you for a moment. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to do a little switcheroo 
and I am going to work underneath your your chest and your arm here. We're gonna work on your back. So if you'll give me just a second. It's a bit awkward, that's all right. So I'm going to come up underneath your arm here. There. How does this feel? How is this pressure? Okay. Do let me know again if it's painful. So as I was saying before, our whole body gets involved in breathing in. And when we breathe out, our whole body gets into the motion as well. Our chest sinks downwards. We release that pressure. Our diaphragm is pushing it out, pushing the air out. So we think that it's just a small part breathing, but this, this is the foundation. This is what we need to really start retraining the body and balancing it. Balance is the big thing. So I am going to do a little bit of traction here. So I have your hand, okay? And I am gonna pull down a little bit and you might feel that motion in your head as well. And this is all connected, right? But I want to see what happens if I move the arm a bit. If there is tension that gets stuck, or if this is all pretty fluid. Is this painful at all? No. Okay. Good. And then I am going to have you do a few stretches here with me. So I'm going to traction your arm. I'm going to hold your, your hand in your arm here. And I'm going to have you roll your head away from your, from your arm here. So turn your head to the side and you're going to feel a little stretch, okay? We don't want it to be to the place that it's painful, but you definitely want to feel it, okay? Good. This should be very gentle. And I'm going to have you take a deep breath. I want it to be to the depth that you can feel the stretch inside of your body, okay? It's kind of a funny way of explaining it, but you'll understand what I mean when you take a deep breath. So take a deep breath until you feel the stretch inside. Good. Good. Yeah, it's kind of a strange feeling, isn't it? Okay, let's do that a couple more times. So, take a deep breath in. And out. Take a deep breath in. And out. Good. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring your head back to center here. Good. All right. And then let's work a little bit more on the rib cage and the abdomen here. So I'm going to have one, one hand stabilize while I work the sides. The sides are also a place that our brain has normalized to a point where we really don't notice them. It's a strange feeling if someone touches your side, especially if you didn't realize someone was there. It kind of gives you that feeling like, I know that's connected to me, but where? Where is that? I'm 
I'm just going to bring your arm up. You don't have to do anything here. I'm going to bring it up so your hand's above your head and just let your hand fall open. Okay? And I am just going to work more around the shoulder and the back. How is this pressure? Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you noticed so far. Have you noticed anything different in your movement, in your breathing, even just as you're sitting here, the weight of your body, anything like that? That is just fine. Just want to check in once in a while and get used to becoming aware of where our body is and what's going on with it. Okay, and let's go ahead and put the arm back here. And then I'm going to work around a little bit more here. The shoulder. So I want you to think about something here. Okay? This works your mind a little bit as much as it works your body. But I want you to think of the back of your body. I don't know about you, but unless it's hurting me, I don't pay attention to the back of my body. Or at least I didn't so much until we really started getting into structural integration. I want you to think about how it feels. And when we breathe, our back should be moving as well. It should be expanding. So, with that, I'm actually going to move your arm here, and I'm going to put it right on your stomach here, okay? So your hand's just laying across the body. And I'm going to come underneath your back, and I am going to put my hands in a few different places. I'm going to have you try to breathe into them, so that you, you breathe into that contact, okay? I'm going to show you what I mean by your back also working when we breathe. So if you could just take a deep breath in and feel where my hand is, or in the middle of your back, a little more on the upper side, but still kind of in the middle here, and try to breathe into that. Good, just like that. And then what about my other hand here? And this is right in the middle. Can you breathe so that the middle of your back is pushing into my hand? Good. And then if I move my hand down a little bit, right into the low back here. This one might be a little tricky because we don't think about it, but your low back also expands quite a bit. Can you breathe into your lower back and try to touch my hand? Good, just like that. So that's what we want to that's what we want to remind our body of that we have the ability to do this. We're not allowing our organs to, to work to their fullest ability that they were built to do. So, I'm going to pull your arm back here so it's lying at your side. And I'm going to start working more on the other side. 
so while I'm down here, we'll just work into the bottom of the rib cage here. While Rolfing has its recipe, because it is goal oriented, I'm not going to be moving in the same exact order on each side, especially because our two sides are rarely perfectly symmetrical and they may need different different techniques. Okay. And I'm just going to watch you for a moment. If you could just breathe. Let your body have a second to process everything. Okay. And then we'll come in a little bit more. How is this pressure for you? Good. Very good. And I'm just going to be working my way downwards here. So the thing that sets structural integration and ralphing apart from other body work tends to be that we work on, of course, breaking everything down and putting it back together, right? We are trying to get rid of the problem, fix what we need to, allow it to build back up, but the last part which Dr. Rolf had thought was, was a deficit in other bodywork modalities is that we aren't balancing it. So we might have one area that's fixed, but it's not exactly calibrated to the rest of the body. And the rest of the body is not balanced with it, which can cause other problems. As I said before, the body is excellent at compensation. Just a lot of times it happens to be in the wrong way. Now let me come up and work the upper chest here. A lot of a lot of what we'll be doing is also a matter of balance bringing it all together finished working up here. I'm going to come around to your side again so that we can traction the arm and get a little bit of a stretch in. I'm not doing all the work here. <laughs> it's a give and take. There is such a thing as using the own body's strength and weight against it. Call that isometric exercise. And that can be really, really beneficial, especially for people who have restriction. We can use the body to ease its own restriction. And isometric exercises are also excellent for keeping people from deconditioning. If they have like fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, or perhaps they're just ill for a long period of time. Okay, and I am going to get up and we will just come to the other side. Yeah. And let's go ahead and I'll have your arm here. Okay. Alrighty, 
So I'm going to pull it a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to have you roll your head away from your arm here. Just until we get that gentle stretch. We're not trying to crank it. We're not trying to cause any injury. Just want to gently stretch it. Okay, and I'm going to have you breathe into it, right? Remember, we're breathing so that we feel the stretch inside our bodies. If you could do that three times for me, okay? Deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in. And out. Last one. Deep breath in. And out. Good, good. So I'm going to have you keep your head there. And I'm actually going to have you try to nod your head up and down. Okay. Good. Just try to nod the head. Yep. There you go. Just very gently. Okay. And then I am going to have you keep your head turned. And then I want you to stretch your arm and stretch out your index finger. Just your first finger here, okay? There we go. We're going to breathe into this one as well. Three times. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Good. And let's bring your head back to center. And then I'm actually going to have you get up for me. But we're going to do this very slowly. So since we've been working on you, been doing a lot of deep breathing, it's very relaxing. Our body has gotten pretty cozy here. So when you get up, your blood pressure is going to change a bit. Your heart rate's going to change. You might feel dizzy. So I'm going to give you a moment to stabilize. Do use the table to lean on or to stabilize yourself if need be. Don't want you falling over. Okay? And I'll give you a moment to get up. Right? Okay, how you feeling? Might feel a little strange, yeah, you might be a little, little almost like you've been on a boat, okay? So, if you wouldn't mind just taking a few breaths for me, and I want you to tell me about what you notice. It's okay if you don't really notice anything specific, but if there's any change, if you feel like there's one part that feels more tense than another, if you feel like something's been not worked on as much as the other. Okay, doing pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna keep watching you for a moment. Okay. All right, that looks good. It definitely looks different. I don't know if it feels if it feels much different for you, but it definitely looks different. So, now I'm going to have you sit down, okay? And we're going to work a little on your shoulders and your back. 
So I am going to have you sit and I want you to push your feet into the floor, okay? So this is going to give us more of a stabilized position so that I don't push you forward, okay? We want to make sure that I'm not going to be pushing you when you fall. That wouldn't be good for, for anybody. But your feet are meant to stabilize you. So if you press them into the ground, especially the balls of the feet, then that helps press against any resistance. It also helps us to sit up a little taller as well and make sure that we're sitting straight. So I'm going to have you look straight forward for me. Okay. Keep your feet stabilized. And I am going to have you drop your shoulders down. Feel like they are weighted down. Okay. You might even feel a little stretch here. So drop the shoulders down. Just drop them down. Good. Okay. And I am going to be having my arm right in on your shoulder. Okay, top of your shoulder. I'm going to have you look downwards until you can feel a stretch, very gentle stretch. Okay? And I am going to keep pressing my forearm here. I might do a little bit of movement. Okay? And now I'm going to have you turn your head towards the other side again till we feel a gentle stretch good and how was that okay and if you could come back to center now i'm going to have you turn your head so that you're tilting it to to the other side so almost like you're trying to to touch your ear to your shoulder and instead of having it just kind of angled I want you to imagine that it is an arc that it is this arc shape rather than just up and over okay we want to get some length in there good now is this all right I'm gonna have you do one more thing here I'm gonna have you try to move your chin down, try to tuck it in a little bit as you're, as you're tilted. Yeah, that's, that's a funny feeling, isn't it? <laughs> and we'll just leave this here for a moment. Good, and then go ahead and bring your head back to center, okay? All right, let's repeat that on the other side. Okay, so go ahead and look straight ahead for me. Okay, so drop the shoulders down. Stabilize the feet so I can't push you. Good, all right. And then I'm going to have you look down until there's a gentle stretch there. Good. Good. Okay, and can you turn your head away? Yeah, just kind of swivel there. Good, and then come to center. And now we'll do the tilting. So remember to try to get that, that curve there. There you go. Okay, and can you move your chin down? Mm hmm. And then we'll hold it. Okay, and go ahead and bring it back to center. All right, so let me just take a look here. How do your arms feel? How do your shoulders feel? Okay, yeah, there's definitely, it's a strange little stretch when you have it for the first time, absolutely. So now I'm going to work on your back, 
and I'm gonna have you lean forward, okay? And you're gonna put your hands on the massage table. I just need you to be in a position where it's comfortable for you and I can reach your back, right? Okay, and then I am going to just move around you so I can so I can work on you there. Good. And I'm gonna be pushing. You're gonna feel more my fists here. And there's not really a way to say it that it doesn't sound violent, but it's just my clenched hand that is gonna be pressing in to your lower back, your middle low back. And I'm gonna have you look down for me. Okay, that gets a good stretch. I'm gonna work slowly downwards. I'm gonna do some stretching. It looks more like pressing, but we're doing some good stretches here. Okay, just very gently. How's this pressure? Okay, just remember to let me know. I can't feel what you're feeling, unfortunately, so I'm not sure if it's enough or not, or if it's too much. Okay, I'm working down the spine. Good, good. Now I'm going to have you bring your head up, and I'm going to span my hands, and they're going to be fingers towards the floor. I'm going to be pressing downwards here with my hands spanned on your back, okay? Good, and I'm going to have you look down. All right, and how's this stretch? Good, good. Now I'm going to have you try to tuck your chin and drop a little further. There we go. Good, and I'm going to have you do one more thing here. I want you to try to tuck your tailbone under. If you have to move it a couple of times to really feel what that means, that's okay. I want you to try to go under. There you go, good. Okay, now if I could have you sit up tall for me. Wonderful, and I'm going to push my clenched hands, my fists here. These are going to go into more of the sides of your low back here. Okay, and I am going to have you extend your tailbone. Okay, so push it outwards and then tuck it in. Okay, just like that. So I'll have you push it out again and tuck it in, push it out, and tuck it in. Let's do one more time. Push it out, and tuck it in. Good, okay. Go ahead and sit up tall for me again. There you go, and go ahead and look down. I'll be pressing in to your upper back now. I'm going to have you look up and down. And here, I want you to try to make your back more round, okay? So it almost feels more like, more like kind of slouching, but without your neck involved as much. And I want you to try to drop your elbows so they, so they feel real heavy, so we're getting a stretch there. Then I'm going to have you look up and then look down. Look up, look down, look up, look down. And there we go. So I am going to have you get up and I'm going to have you do a couple walks for me again. All right. Okay, just take your time. And I want to see what you notice about 
how your body feels, how it's changed maybe. You don't have to necessarily try to put specifically accurate words, even if it's something like you do feel a change in X area. It may feel like this or that, okay? All right, go ahead and go again. Good. You're definitely walking a lot different than you did when you first came in, okay? So just go ahead and stand here and do, do some breaths for me, okay? Just breathe normally. And I'm going to leave you with some food for thought. While we have brought awareness to the body, to how we breathe, I want you to carry that in your day-to-day -day life as well. So in order to break the body's habits, I want you a few times a day, I think. Let's do two or three times a day. You could even set an alarm if that helps. I want you to take five to six deep breaths, deep enough that you feel your abdomen get involved, your upper back, your lower back. We want to get everything involved, okay? Deep breaths so that we can break the body's usual pattern so that we can try to, to fix this, right? Okay, so with that, that's going to end our session, okay? Alrighty, so thank you so very much for coming in today. I really appreciate you choosing me to be your structural integration... Mm, what's the word? Structural integrator, let's say, your rolfer, okay? Alrighty. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Bye now. I first came upon Rolfing actually in a fiction book when I was probably 10 or 11. And in it, it said that this girl wanted to try rolfing on her friend, and the friend described it as being pretty painful, and she said something like, yeah, that's how you know it's working. So from there, it was something that I didn't really approach with ASMR, in that I thought it was one of those more brutal body works, just from that that instance, but it was actually pretty interesting when I did my video for the Esalen massage. That's when I was like, wait a second, so Ida Rolf, Milton Traeger, and Feldenkrais all taught at Esalen? That's interesting. So then it was on my radar again. So most of my research for this one came from the official rolf.org Dr. Ida Rolf Institute website, as well as a German book, Rolfing Structural Integration, What It Achieves, How It Works, and Whom It Helps, by Hans George Breckinglinghaus, I think, published in 2002 in addition to a very, very helpful YouTube video that caught my eye because it was something like, this is what a rolfing session looks, Joe Rogan. And I'm like, oh, what did that dude say? <laughs> so I don't know what that was about, but it was funny. But there was both a good amount of information and not a lot of information. There's a lot of information on Dr. Ida Rolf, but it all kind of says the same thing. And there's not a lot of information on, like they talk a little bit about the sessions, a little bit about the recipe, 
Not exactly so much as the technique, but luckily for ASMR, that's just fine. So, this was a really fun video to research for. It, uh, you know, I had to dredge up the old, the old archive, internet archive resources and, and pick out what I could. But overall, it's a good fit. So, I really hope you enjoyed it.